Yes, I've gotten into the Devil May Cry series. So after I got the collection and beat the first game, which here are my thoughts on that game. Hey Skypec, what did you think of Devil May Cry 1? It was such a delight! Jokes aside, I really did enjoy the first game. But throughout my time playing Devil May Cry 1, I kept hearing the cries of the Devil May Cry fans saying, The second game fucking sucks! When hearing the many people cry about this game, I started to think to myself, is this game really that bad? And we all know there's only one way to find that out. And that's by playing the game for yourself. So I decided to play Devil May Cry 2 for myself. And even though I only got to the ninth mission before I quit out of pure boredom, I think it was enough missions for me to get the feel on what the game was like and why everyone hated it. So in the first scene, we see Lucia, a new character only in this game, about to take this coin looking item called the Arcane Medaglia, I think. But as she's about to snatch it and sell it on eBay for millions, she ends up getting interrupted by a bunch of demon bird things. I don't know what the heck to call these things. And as Lucia is trying to fight them off, one of the birds grabs the coin. But Dante comes in to ruin the demon's careers and take the coin for himself. And just as we think Dante is going to end Lucia's eBay scalping career, he just shoots the leftover demon bird that was about to attack her. And then he realizes Lucia was just trying to make a little money, so he gives the coin back to her. And then she just randomly throws a knife at a map. Like seriously. What did the map ever do to you? All jokes aside, I watched this cutscene a few times while writing this script and I still have no idea what the heck is going on. That's why I was making a bunch of shitty eBay jokes. But now we head to the first mission where we can experience the controls for the first time. There's actually something that really made me happy about this game. Let's get a feel for the controls first. Oh, double jump, okay. Okay, well this significantly makes this game better than DMC1 where you had to purchase that. The only unfortunate thing is that I could not double jump onto a wall and jump again. I can understand why they wouldn't do that though. And then I got to my first red orb of the game. Here's my reaction to seeing Devil May Cry 2 red orbs. What is that red orb? <laughs> what the f Yeah, I didn't like it. But there's another thing I didn't like. Dante's freaking tap shoes. That shoe click is gonna get on my nerves, I know it. Whether Dante's wearing tab shoes or not is the least of our concerns though, because now we head into the combat. Now, let me tell you something about Devil May Cry games. When you play Devil May Cry game for the first time, the difficulty will be on normal. And since I played the first Devil May Cry game for the first time, it was a piece of cake, with Devil Trigger of course. But now let's head on to the third game. Now, if you look up what's the hardest Devil May Cry game in the series, it'll show Devil May Cry 3. And they aren't joking. To be fair, I wasn't really paying attention to the controls being shown to me on the screen, but the game is still freaking hard! Side note, don't you think it'd be funny if Dante taught you the controls instead of you having to read them? Blast the enemy into the air. Hold R1 and press triangle while holding the left stick back. Hold down triangle and your character will rise into the air as well. Okay, we're getting a little off topic here. The combat in Devil May Cry 2, it was okay at first. But most of the time you can just do this. X. Or do I have to unlock that? So yeah, nothing much to talk about for combat. Also, I found out I could wall run. That's pretty cool, I guess. So after a little while of being on the first mission, I seen the power-up station. I don't know what the heck to call it. But I found out that the prices have increased in Devil May Cry 2, which is gonna be bad for me because of my bad case of skill issue, which you will see this deadly gamer disease when we get to it. So I ended up buying one vital star. And oh boy, here comes my favorite part of this game, S-A-L. Or sell. This stands for stupid auto lock on. Here's what that looks like. Just naturally kind of bad with your freaking lock on. It was locking on to someone behind the freaking wall. Do these guys know how to aim? Frick, dude, stop going behind the wall. Face me like a man. I, okay, stop it. I. Oh, fuck. Okay, I accidentally. Trigger, devil trigger. Also, devil trigger is alright. So after a little bit more fighting and running around, we see a building that Lucia is about to enter freaking explode out of nowhere, and Dante comes to rescue her in HD quality. And with that, the first mission's complete. And now we get onto the second mission where we get to see this... Beautiful old lady. Old lady graphics on the PS2 did not look great, did they? Jokes aside, the old lady named Mathieu tells us that they were once guardians of their land, Vie de Mali, and that they once fought demons with Sparta. Mathieu then asks Dante to deal with Arius and his master who have transformed Vie de Mali into a demon party, to which now we find out how Dante decides if he's gonna help you out. Looks like it's your lucky day. What? It, it, it's decided on a damn coin flip if Dante helps you or not? <laughs> so yeah, if Dante flips the coin on the other side, then he's just like, Well, goodbye chat. Good luck with those demons. 
And now we head on to the second mission. The second mission mostly just contains a lot of doors which you gotta try not to get lost in, and booby traps with shitty enemies. And it seems even my OBS was having a hard time processing the labyrinth of shitty bosses because it decided to do this to me. So yeah, the game audio in the video is going to be a little bit delayed by a second, and there's nothing I can do about that either because I recorded my voice and the audio on the same track, so sorry about that in advance. Anyways, we then enter a room, fight some enemies, and get a new ability for our devil trigger. And that's it for mission 2. On to mission 3. Mission 3 sucks because of this. Mmm, pull. Okay, I must- I must be able to swing on this pole. Let me swing on this damn pole, I must. After the disappointment I got from not being able to spin on pulls like in Devil May Cry 3, I fought Goatling and then Orangira. Oran- Orangira? What the fuck are these names though? After almost dying to Orange, I choose my way to finish the third mission. And even though I was just heading to the fourth mission, I was already getting bored. So now we're starting mission four, where we fight these annoying AF monkeys for way too long. After fighting the monkeys, I manageably rolled through a closing door after a failed <laughs> attempt. And then we get to the fourth boss? I think, Joquet Gum. It wasn't even the most annoying boss of this game, but I thought it was pretty annoying because I didn't know how to frickin' damage it. After chasing my way through my skill issue, I obtained the shotgun and, whoo, bike. Whee! We drove into the fifth mission, where I find a new hatred for wolves, because the ones I were fighting were on a frickin' sugar high. Bro, these things are flying all over the place. <laughs> After defeating my newfound hatred, I run around a little bit and eventually come to fight most likely the weirdest entities in the game. It's an infested tank. I don't even know if I can call them demons or enemies. After defeating the three infested tanks and failing to do a simple jump, I get a new item called the Offense Heart and find probably the worst boss fight in the game, an infested chopper. And the reason why this boss is so bad, it's because... Jokes aside, I forgot that I could fly with double trigger, so I ended up fighting this boss for 16 minutes. Not to mention, my skill issue ended up getting me knocked off a building and then killed. But then I finally killed the chopper. Fucking finally! Holy shit! We then go to the sixth mission, where we get to fight Nefasaurus. I think. Which I totally didn't die to this boss three freaking times because it's lasers, which I didn't know how to dodge. I finally used my shotgun and learned how to judge. Judge? finally learned how to dodge, and finally killed the boss. Oh, I did it, I did it, oh sh And then we go to mission seven. <clears throat> I need water. And then we go to mission seven. We see a helicopter fly onto the pad, to which we need to go fight some enemies, go down an elevator, go for a ride in the train to Busan, go back up an elevator, and we finally make it to the top of the helicopter pad, where a really pale man looks at us menacingly. On the eighth mission, we fight Furiataurus, I think. And when I get really low on health, I really start getting good at dodging. But, we're not dead yet. Dead. After killing Furiatorus, I stopped playing the game because I was getting the effects of true gaming boredom. But I guess now it's time to give my thoughts on the game. So I'm going to rank the parts of the game 1 out of 5 Devil May Cry 2 Red Orbs. So first of all, the story. I think the story is alright. I guess 4 out of 5 Red Orbs. I'm not much of a story nerd, so I don't understand much of any story in any games. So sorry about that. Combat. Combat is one of the main things in Devil May Cry games that need to be good. And since I'm not good at Devil May Cry, and I don't know how to do most of the combos in the game, I'm going to write the combat based on the combos I did. I'd rank the combat 3 out of 5. I didn't really like it. Moveset. The moveset was basically one of my favorite parts of the game. I could do a double jump in the air without having to purchase it, and I could wall run. And I heard complaints about the role being annoying and not feeling that great, but I liked it. 4.5 out of 5. Enemies and bosses. Easily the worst part of the game. Need I elaborate any further? <laughs> Music. Music is another thing that is really important in games, in order to feel the vibes of what's going on. The only thing that wasn't making me fully fall asleep was the music. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Dante's personality. He's still emo. I like the Dante that we got in Devil May Cry 3, 4, and 5, when he has this cool badass personality. In the first two games, he gives off a really emo but still badass vibe. And that's fine. I think they still did it better in Devil May Cry 1. So I'm gonna rank it a 3.5 out of 5. And in total, I rate this game a 3 out of 5.
Ouch. And that's about it. Sorry if I didn't elaborate on a lot of parts in this review. This is kind of my first time reviewing something, so I'm not great at it. So let me know what your thoughts and opinions are on this game down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. It's free and you can unsub whenever you want. And share this video with your friends. Anyways, thanks for watching the video and see you next time.